Right then guys, real quick, if you're part of the 70% of people that watch these videos and aren't subscribed, come on now, do me a favor and hit that subscribe button. I put a TCG video out at least once a day. So go on, do us a favor, hit that button. Now, let's get into the fun stuff, shall we? Right then, so Champion's Path sort of just got kind of revealed and you know, now we know we're getting the Charizard Full Art and the Charizard VMAX uh, Ultra Rare, which is, you know, you know, I'm not really a collector, but I know for you guys that's like mad. Get ready for the scalping. But I'm predominantly a TCG player. I don't really care so much about collected. So what I want to know is, what are the best cards from Champion's Path? Spoiler alert, there's actually not that many. So let's have a look. What's my top five cards? From Champions Path. Don't look. Oh, and I've also got the Eternatus code giveaway that I'll be doing at the end of the video. So make sure you hang around and then we'll see if you want for that, okay? Right, so at number five, I've actually got Incineroar V, uh, a basic fire type Pokemon with 220 HP with two attacks. The first attack is the one I'm most a fan of, uh, and that's Grand Flame for one, uh, two fire, one colorless. You do 90 damage. You can attach up to two uh, red energies from your discard pile, attach them to one of your benched Pokemon. So this is really cool because in some decks you do see Victini V used for a similar reason. Because, um, you know, Spreading Flames lets you accelerate energy from the bin quite quickly. That's for one energy. So this kind of plays a different role. This is like if you want to reattach your energies from your bin, um, you know, you haven't got Welder in your hand and you want to do a little poke at the same time. That's actually quite, that's why I like it. 90 damage is a really good number to be hitting for with a little this is going to really help your second center scorch uh, V Max. This is because this is where I see this playing most. You can reattach your energy to center scorch, you know, do a little bit of damage at the same time. Then, then, then if they KO this, you can, you know, stamp them to one and have your next center scorch V Max. So it's actually quite good for that regard. Uh, in the second attack, if you attach one more energy, you do 220 and it does 30 to itself. Not really seeing a whole lot of use there, but it does give you a secondary attacker in the Center Scorch deck, which you otherwise haven't really got. Because with Center Scorch, you know, you've got your Volcano does 110, but your Center Scorch, you know, does, you know, your silly number, whatever energy you attach. But you haven't really got an interim kind of attacker, and that's where this what can come into play. So, yeah, it's not too bad. It's not particularly great, but it's not too bad either. Right, so at number four, I've got Gardevoir VMAX. Uh, VMAX Pokemon 320 HP with one attack, Max Cure. For Psychic, Psychic, Colorless, you do 108 and you heal 50 from this Pokemon. So on face value, 180 is a nice clean two shot. You know, you can have stuff like Rose to help set this up. I've actually got gameplay of this on my channel where we thought it was going to be in Dark to Blaze. Go check that out if you want. But in combination with Odd Canned Goods, or whatever it's going to be translated to, which lets you heal 80 from a Psychic Pokemon, then discard an energy, you can really turn it into a real hardcore tanky deck. And it's actually, uh, I didn't think it'd be possible. I think Pokemon hit silly numbers now these days, but you can actually turn it into a real good healing deck. Weakness to metal, bit of a problem. You can go just holler out some weak guards if you want because you can actually out heal brave blades it is possible so guard of rv do i think it's going to be an absolute well beater though probably not it's going to have a hard center score sense so can just reach over the top you know and we have yet to be seen if you can like you know out heal like dread n270 dread n270 but if you can in combination like mallow liners and knock hand goods and you've got it to have a decent little archetype on your hands so number four guard of rv man Okay, next up we've got Lucario V, and if we're looking at the Jiffy ranking it on art alone, this would be number one for sure. This is really cool card, and what I like this for, and I guess you've got Galarian Farfetch for this as well, but Lucario could become the new face of um, fighting deck just because, you know, first attack, 40 to the active, 20 to the bench, decent spread, you know, similar to like a Jet Punch or a Hammerhead, you know, uh, Landorus EX and Buzzwell respectively, but then three for 180, and you know, not much of a drawback. Uh, isn't bad. It's not bad at all. Um, I can see this being played with uh, Sir Farfetch V, and you could just you know have a little combo between the two. Because 180 is not bad, you know. Uh, I mean, it's not particularly great, but it does one shot all fighting weak stuff. You know, we can maybe play it with Giant Bomb. This has no abilities. You could potentially play it with Greens also. You got Turbo Patch. You've got the base support coming out in the um, Vault Tackle set. But even without that, I think you, you should be able to stream these. Uh, with turbo patch manuals and beads potentially as well so i actually think this card is actually kind of decent do i think it's going to be an absolute well beater probably not again there's going to be a theme with the pokemon in this deck uh, in this set they're not really particularly like world beater pokemon 
But could it be a decent little deck that can pick up some uh, rogue wins and stuff like a turn us and P Kronk that's still knocking her out for some reason? I do think it can do that. So we got Lucario, number three. Okay, next up we've got Altaria. Now, I think this is a real good card. Uh, stage 1 Pokemon, 110 HP, the ability, you know, Miracle Guard, prevent all damage done to this Pokemon by V and GX. So it's, we've got the same ability, to UI, uh, except, you know, it's a stage 1, and that could prove, like, that could make it so much better. Like, do not underestimate the power of her stage one safeguard. We've seen them before. This puts hit and run firmly back on the map. I mean, whether it's like a Hitmonchan or a Greedon or someone else that I'm forgetting about, it's got a one retreat cost as a stage one, so you can U turn board it. That makes it so much more streamable. That this might put Greedon on the map, like no word of a lie, because you know, it, I guess the, the perfect partner for Greedon would be a Decidueye, right? But you ain't involved in a stage two in a hit and run day. It ain't happening. Stage one, however, you can. You can go down a Pokemon breed and nurturing route, something like this. It might even be able to do like a Porygon Z standalone deck. You can even attack with this. The attack's usable with a uh, powerful energy. Yeah, it's not that strong. But if your opponent literally can't hit you, you could be okay. 110 HP is not too bad with a uh, powerful uh, uh, giant child, uh, big charm, I should say. You might be able to push into good range. So again, actually, this could be really good. And you, could it put some sort of Storly archetype back on the map? I don't know. I mean, uh, ADP already plays a dual loon, so that could just a bit of a thorn. But a lot of other decks don't. Um, and I really think Altari in a hit and run type deck could be quite strong. So and that's why I've got it at number two. But at number one, I've got a trainer card that I think a lot of people have overlooked. Now, this format is in dire need of like item consistency search, okay? We lost Acro Bike. I've seen it rotate twice now. I'm a fucking old geezer. But we've seen Acro Bike been and gone. Um, and I think a lot of decks are starting to realize that Acro Bike is like super important. Like a lot of world decks. Like stuff like uh, Houndoom, for example, could really do with a little bit of extra dig. Uh, and I think Rotom Phone can be that dig. Item card, look at the top five cards of your deck, pick one, put it to the top, shuffle the other four back. So, on face value, it doesn't actually let you see cards, don't get me wrong, but what it can do in combination with Oranguru is let you have an acro bike from the top five cards of your deck. Now, Oranguru is already a card that you know increases consistency a lot, we know this, but in combination with this now, you can effectively primate wisdom the top five cards you can choose. I think in the right archetype where you're really combo reliant, maybe even stage two decks. This is an absolute game changer. This could like, imagine that, like, imagine a premonition from Galay back from Breakthrough. That had a similar ability, right? Um, but in combination with um, Oh and Goo, you actually get to take one. And Galade saw some re did see some play in combination with Maxi's hidden wall trick and stuff like this. Like Glade Artillery was a deck back then. Don't get it twisted. It was a decent deck as well. So I think the format, the way we've gone. You know, if you don't want to dump and draw, dump and draw, you want to have a bit of more of item-based search and, you know, consistency boost, I think this could be that. Like, this isn't far off a trainer's mail. You know, once you've got Oranguru out, you have got yourself a trainer's mail, essentially. But this can let you grab energy, special energy as well. Special energy dig, we ain't really got that. Um, you know, trainer dig, supporter dig, anything. This, in combination with Oranguru, can let you... And this go into any deck also. And I think for that, I have to put number one for me. I can see this going into most other decks, whereas this this um, this set has no universal good league, universal good trainers apart from Rotom Phone. Everything else, I feel, is fringe. Looking at my list now, it, it's all fringe. Maybe Alteria can give birth to an archetype. Do I think Guide of is going to be well beaten? No. Do I think Incineroar is that great? I mean, in World decks, it could be it could be good, but it also might not be. Um, Lucario, it's a counter. But this, in combination with Oranguru, I think can go into any deck and make that deck better. So that's why I've got it at number one. But uh, that's all that. Let me know what you think of my top five down in the comments. Let's get to the Eternatus Code giveaway, baby. Cheers! Right then, so we've got the comment section here. I'm going to go down the comments, the count how many there are, then I'm going to whack uh, those numbers into a random number generator. That's going to pick a number between one and whatever number of comments of our different entries. And then I'm going to pick... Uh, and then whatever number it gives me, wherever the corresponding comment is, they're going to be the winner. So let's have a look. Right, so I actually counted 50 different uh, entries. So we're going to go between 1 and 50. We're going to click it five times. And whatever number it gives me, that person who commented is, they're going to be the winner. All right, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Number 13. That's my lucky number. Let's go back and count, shall we? All right, so let's count. So we got 1, 
two, three, four, five. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 13 here we go so Arz Arzalan B you are the winner well done well done well done you got yourself four Eternus codes look at you um what I'm gonna do uh, if you send me a message on Twitter I'll send you a message on Twitter and you'll get your codes well done thank you to everyone who entered I'm looking to do some more giveaways soon to keep an eye on the channel for that but for thank you for watching as always, guys, you have to more Dark into Blades content. Check the playlist in the description for 50 decks waiting for you to watch, okay? But thank you for watching. Well done to R's and B for winning. Have a clap. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you all next time.